Rory. Welcome to today's webinar. You can see the title there, Building a Financial Legacy for Your Children. We're in Women's Month. So Julie's presentation is aimed at women. I see a lot of people on the webinar are uh, gentlemen, so I'll make it, I'll try and make it as, as generic as possible. Anyway, let's get started. Um, so being Women's Month, um, women are key decision makers within families and are often the drivers of income and wealth for their families. So active participation, and this is the point I want to highlight for the ladies, active participation in wealth management can strengthen women's commitment to protecting and growing their assets with the, the goal of obviously um, leaving a legacy for their children. Um, attaining uh, financial security for you and your uh, heirs typically requires you to accept responsibility for the management of significant investment assets. So saying that, creating a lasting financial legacy for your children to build their financial futures goes far beyond just wealth. And this is obviously, uh, we're going to talk about a lot today, it's going far just beyond just leaving an inheritance. So it includes offering them a legacy of knowledge. And this is also what I want to highlight for the ladies. Well, ladies um, need to learn more about financial matters as such. Um, so leaving a legacy of knowledge and a history of good financial habits. So they, your children are well positioned to achieve their own financial success. Okay, so here's my agenda for today. Oops. There we go, there's my agenda for today. Um, so the idea is, my objective today is to discuss how women are taking charge of their wealth the wealth creation and making legacy decisions. So even if you're a single, uh, married or a surviving widow, as I say, this presentation is really aimed at, uh, at women, it is in your best interest to obtain as much education as possible about wealth planning, investments and related matters. But I think gentlemen can also um, uh, relate to that. Okay. So even if you are not directly responsible for um, making important financial decisions, it is vital to hold, um, to, to, sorry, to, to have uh, knowledge um, in those, those areas in order to uh, communicate effectively with the financial advisor. And I'm going to highlight this a lot today, especially for the ladies. You're not in the, alone in, the, in, 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 in this. Speak to your financial advisor. They're there to help you. So if you understand more about the markets and understand more about finances, you can effectively communicate more effectively. So the, the important point I want to highlight here is that you are not alone. You do not have to be alone in, in doing this. So one of the most important empowering things you can do for yourself is to build an amazing support team around yourself. So that's where the financial advisor will come in and help you with that. So it's, uh, you can make more important, more it's a objective investment decisions as opposed to getting advice from family and friends. Okay, so the whole idea is that it's going to help you build up the wealth, and we'll be talking about this in the presentation build up or accumulate wealth, um, but also to preserve it and ultimately just uh, distributing that wealth. Okay. Hey guys, geez, I realized I was muted there. Ah, uh, boy. Okay. So the, the main point I wanted to make on this slide here is that, uh, ladies, um, you're not alone. The idea is to get hold of the financial advisor to help you with this whole journey about financial independence and financial or creating that legacy. Okay. So a financial advisor will give you objective advice and obviously along the lines of building up assets or accumulating wealth as well as preserving it as well as also uh, ultimately distributing it as generational wealth. Okay. Now what? There we go. Okay. Click on the screen and, and mute me. Okay. So, as I say, women are on the daily spending more, uh, uh, more time than men making economic decisions for the families. Uh, this is from a consumer as well as obviously services point of view. Do you know that women hold more purchasing power than men at the moment when it comes to 
uh, making decisions around new homes, buying new homes. 91% of decisions are made by women. 66% uh, when it comes to computers is women. Um, and then 92% of women make holiday decisions, where they're going for holidays. Um, and then 80% of healthcare decisions are made by women. So that was quite interesting. So women are basically, they're rising. Um, as I say, they're getting more clout um, when it comes to economic, and this is the biggest economic shift we're seeing for in the last uh, recent decades. They did a survey, and this is from BCG uh, Global Wealth. They found that um, not only women are generating more money, um, you can see uh, uh, from, from 2016, let me get my cursor here quickly. From 2016 to 2019, um, the growth was 6.1%. Was they anticipate going forward for the next four years, that's going to be uh, 7.2%. So although they're managing a third of the of the uh, world's wealth, they're actually adding up to five trillion dollars globally. That was quite interesting when I saw these kind of stats. Okay, so women have a great, are, are amassing greater wealth um, than, than before. That's number one. And number two, also what's important, and I found this was interesting, that um, women are there are women are sitting on the, on on uh, well CEOs of JSC listed companies for example the JSC listed himself the JSC uh, limited the company itself is headed by a, a lady called Dr Leila Fari and before her was uh, Nikki Newton J uh, King she was a CEO and by the way uh, Dr Leila Fari is one of our speakers uh, next week uh, with our I think big series she'll be on next week Tuesday um, and should be talking about uh, the future of the markets and things like that. Um, most of us have heard of um, Magda Wazniki. She's a she's CEO or the co-founder and CEO of Signia. And some of you might not have known that uh, NASPA South Africa is, is headed by the first and only black woman in South Africa to be running a JC top, uh, top 40 company. Her name is Futi. I hope I pronounced her name properly. Futi Mahagnal. Uh, Dabanya. Okay, so uh, those are the three companies I found that were headed up by, by, by women. Okay, whoops, let me just uh, move my cursor out the way here. Go back normal. Cool. So the point I'm making here is that they're having more and more financial clout in the market. Okay, so when it comes to um, Legacy and inheritance, we talk about uh, they're not synonymous or synonyms. So let me just explain what is a synonym. It's a word or phrase that means exactly uh, the same as another word uh, that means uh, in the same language. So for example, the word um, begin or start or commence or initiate are all synonyms of one another. Okay. But legacy and inheritance, and this is where I want to play around with these words today, are, are slightly different. So most people think of um, uh, of their, their legacy as what they leave behind when they die. Yes, you are leaving behind money, and there's, there's nothing wrong with um, obviously wanting your heirs to be financially secure. But you also leave memories. Okay, Think about which means more to you. Do you want your grandchildren to remember you as grandma, the workaholic who never came to my birthday parties, and, but hey, she left me a, a nice trust fund, or grandma who baked cookies with me, or alternatively, grandpa who took me fishing and camping over weekends and holidays, okay, dressed me up, dressed up like Santa on, on Christmas, as well as he made the best uh, uh, ham and cheese sandwiches. So what do you want to be remembered for? So we want to live a by not just an inheritance, but a legacy. And this is what I wanted to show you today. It is said that, uh, I've just taken this, this old Chinese proverb and I've twisted it a bit. So they say if you, you can either give a child a fish or you can teach a, a, a child how to fish. Okay? An inheritance is leaving a child a fish. A legacy is leaving behind the knowledge of how to fish. I hope that, that makes sense to you. So, yeah, it's just um, if I do a comparison between inheritance and legacy. Um, inheritance is generally used when referring to money or, or material goods being handed down from one person to another. 
where legacy refers to a person being remembered by others. So in other words, inherit traits in personality. This is a, to say some of the things that you might remember, perseverance, kindness, and that kind of stuff. Um, inheritance is passing uh, the title to an estate upon death, whereas legacy is the legal money or property bequeathed to someone in a will. Yeah. Inheritance is something you leave for someone uh, in a state, an asset base or portfolio, a legacy is something you leave in someone. Inheritance is about money and possessions, whereas legacy is about the person. Inheritance is something given to a person, legacy is an impact made on a person. So I hope you guys can start seeing the, the differences between the two of them here. They're not the same thing. Uh, they might be connected, but they're not the same thing. Um, inheritance refers to one's generation's gifts to another, whereas legacy refers to three or four generations. I like this phrase, your children's children. <laughs> okay. Um, inheritance is recipients are temporarily happy and satisfied, whereas the legacy, they are permanently transformed. Inheritance is temporary reward, whereas legacy values are, are imparted. Inheritance leaves behind a monument, whereas legacy is a movement that con continually perpetuates. So I hope you guys can see those kind of those differences. So going back to our fish story, remember it's it, it's it's imparting financial knowledge, it's putting values in the lives of our children, it's creating that infrastructure. Um, that, you know they can eat up the inheritance, but they cannot expend the legacy if we impart it on, onto them. So. This is something that um, if I had to ask you the question, what is your definition of a life well lived? Many of you would say it is more or less about, uh, uh, more, uh, it's more about love and less about lacra. Uh, most people would say, well, they say that 97% would say it's having um, loving family and friends that love me, number one. And number two, some of you also might say, well, up to 40, 75% of people would say, uh, it's having a positive impact on society. Do you know that only 10% of people would say a life well lived is, a, is defined as accumulating a lot of wealth? What do you think about that? Okay, so it is most definitely, and this is a bit of a joke, it's most definitely not about the number of Instagram followers uh, you have. <laughs> okay, so this is my little gripe in life um, where Okay, let me get this quote first. We are leaving a leg. This is a quote from Lindsay Green. Um, she's a Canadian sociologist and researcher. We are leaving a legacy, whether we like it or not. When I say legacy, or inheritance and a legacy can be positive or negative. So our legacy is a combination of the way we live every day and the impact it has on our friends, our family, our community and the world, as well as how we prepare others for life without us. Now, this is an important part here. Leaving a legacy is a way to let others appreciate our love and our consideration for them because we took the time to plan ahead for the impact of our absence we'd have on them. And that's the gist I want to have for the ladies today. It's just planning. And that's why I say sit down with a financial planner and plan for uh, your children's inheritance and children's legacy. Okay. So going back to what I was saying just now, um, my frustration with the school system at the moment. Let me go, rather go back quickly. Um, schools do not teach our children about financial literacy. You know, um, they're teaching they're teaching our children to memorize things. And if there's any teachers on on this on this uh, webinar today, please forgive me. Um, I just find that they yes, they're learning life skills, but the life skills what I find is important. Things like the, to uh, how to negotiate, how to manage, uh, how to communicate, but also how to manage money. I think that's what those are the matters that matter most. So this knowledge lays the foundation um, for the children to build a strong uh, money habits early on and avoid many of the mistakes. And this is where I've come in. I, I was never taught this stuff at school. Um, and also, I'm one of those people that I inherited nothing from my parents. Like I had nothing to inherit. So I started off flat, okay? So I build up from there. So this is the point I'm trying to make here now is that you don't want to make those same mistakes for your children. I always say you want to be your first, you want to be the first millionaire in your family and make sure that carries on forward. So there's 15 ways to teach your children about money. This I got from a website um, called Kids About Money. Uh, from uh, Dave Ramsey's website. That's where I got it from. Dave Ramsey's website. There's 15 ideas. So preschoolers, the earlier you can start them, the better. So it's all very well putting money into a piggy bank, but they don't see the money. 
it's better to use a clear jar. And I did it with my children for many for many years. Um, I bought, I took one of those um, uh, Jacob's Greta uh, coffee jars and I took the labels off. They could see the money going in. So it might be a, a, a rand here, two rand, here, five rand, maybe it might be the 10 rand, but they see it growing. And that's the idea, they see it growing. And the idea they also learn about different coins and things like that. And the notes, 10 rand note, 20 rand note, 50 rand note, 100 rand note. And then we start talking about the animals. I used to talk about the animals. Okay, we're going to put in more lions, we're going to put in some leopards, etc. But the main idea is to set the example. So when you go out shopping, the tutorial watching you all the time. Are you using plastic credit or are you using a debit card? When you go out for dinner, when you're going to pick and pay, well, the shops and things like that, they're watching how you pay, they're learning. Those are the opportunities you can teach children about money. Teach your children about credit, um, the pros and cons. Yeah. And also, when you're going out shopping, as I say, show them that stuff costs money. So when they relate in the, to the money in the money box, the five rand or the 10 rand or 50 rand or the 100 rand, now you can start relating to them, this costs five rand, this costs five rand, okay? And so it goes on. But anyway, those are the preschoolers. The primary schoolers, show them opportunity costs. They want to maybe uh, buy a new uh, uh, dress, show them how much it would cost and how much something else would cost. Uh, opportunity cost um, and let them decide from there and realize there's the opportunity cost uh, and this is what I've learned with my children too I don't give pocket money I, I, I pay them commission so they work I pay them if they don't work they don't get paid <laughs> um, teach your children about impulse buys my son is the worst I hate taking him shopping with me because he wants to buy everything so that's the whole thing about impulsive buying go out of a plan we got a shopping list and we stick to our shopping list. Nothing goes, nothing goes, goes into the trolley that's not on the shopping list. And then also, at a young age, teach your children about giving. If they can learn about giving, they'll learn about also receiving. Um, and that's what's important. And they'll feel good. If they give money out, they'll start feeling good about themselves. And that's also what's important. So money is like giving you a different sense of power when you start giving that when you start giving out the high schoolers the teenagers and i've got two i've got two teenagers myself teach them about contentment my daughter's on social media she see her friends friends are now at 18 getting cars and things like that she must be happy with a second hand uh, law of thought uh, cfs that we're getting her okay compared to her friends driving a new discovery uh evoke whatever the case might be okay be happy with what they got uh, there's nothing wrong with it either <laughs> Um, and then giving the responsibility of a bank account. You know, we move from a money jar to a bank account and then they realize the money can start working for them and they start in, earning interest. Um, and it also, they can start learning about um, budgeting. We'll talk about that just now. So teach them also at a young age to start saving for university. We'll talk about budgeting just now. Get them to pay for their own financial education. They'll, they'll appreciate it more. Um, Teach them more to stay clear of student loans. And yes, um, I'm in a situation where I'm looking forward to my children going to university because I know the, uh, the university fees are going to be lower than I'm paying at the moment in private schooling. <laughs> but plan ahead for that. Don't go and take out a lot of loans and pay for the for the year ahead and what the case might be. Um, be teaching the danger of credit cards. Going back to our money, bar, uh, to uh, setting the example. Um, teach them the danger about credit cards, living within your means, you're not spending more, settling your bills, setting the full amount uh, every month, uh, that kind of stuff. Get them a simple budget. We'll talk about it on the next slide. We'll talk about a simple budget. We'll talk about a 10, a 30, and 70, or a 50, 20, and a 10 budget. And I'll go into more details on the next slide. And then, yeah, we start talking about the magic of compounding. You guys can refer to my, my webinar from last month. We spoke about the magic of compound interest. This is where your money starts making money on top of the money that you got. Um, I talk about money babies, um, so they can learn about that. And then obviously teaching them about different asset classes, giving them higher returns based on higher, the higher the risk, the higher the potential returns. And then also, you know, teach them at a young age. You know, I read a book once, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He says he's buying his son two bicycles, one for him to ride and one for him to rent out. So teach him how to, uh, uh, to make money and teach him about entrepreneurship. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities now for the kids to go online and make things online. My son wants to become an ardent uh, YouTuber because he follows a lot of YouTubers and these guys are making a lot of money as a YouTuber. So just to simplify for, for you, this is one of the books that I read many years ago. This is something that I want my son to read, uh, The Richest Man in Babylon. Very simple book based on a fable 3,000 years ago, but 10 little lessons in it. Pay yourself first by saving 10% of your annual savings. These are the 10 lessons you'll get from this classic timeless uh, book as such. 
Uh, the cheap little book you can pick it up from anywhere, um, spend within your means. That's very basic money principles. Okay, but I want to get out to the bottom here, budget, the budget rule, um, 10, 70, uh, or 20. Um, here we talk about um, the 10, 70, 20 rule is that um, the whole idea is that 70% you know, of the money you will be living on, 20% of what you invest on, and 10% is forgiving. Um, I also come across what they call the 50, 30, and 20% budget. So you spend 50% for your needs or your necessities, okay? 30% uh, for your wants, and I split that, that split up a bit further where I say 10% goes into fun. So yes, you work hard for your money, now you want to have some fun. So 10% goes for fun, 10% 10 for, 10 for further education. Um, this is where personal education, buying courses and books and things like that. When I say books, is books that you learn to further yourself, to increase your um, knowledge and skills. Um, and then 10% for, for, give, for give, what I call give, a charity, business, whatever the case might be. But 20% uh, goes to investments. So you might say 20% completing to investments or I split it into 10% what I call financial freedom account. This is forever money that you never touch. Or um, you can also put it into what I call the, the uh, uh, long-term savings. So save up for the holidays, save up for the car, save up for um, the TV and things like that. You don't go use credit. So those are the rules that teach your children at a very young age. And this book helped me a lot at a, at a young age to do that. Okay. So um, wealth is a gift that you get, that opens up a lot of opportunities, not only for you, it's for your children, as I said just now, it's for your children's children, and obviously the generations to come. It's a, it's a, well, it's a weighty responsibility, uh, it takes time to manage, uh, maintain, and, and obviously preserve. So just to, to, before we get into the, um, the steps to building financial, uh, uh, financial uh, legacy, Yes, three simple steps to building wealth. And <laughs> I can't make it more simple than this. And this is, as I said, common sense. Make money, save money, invest money. Okay, so step step one is obviously when you start working and things like that, you're starting to earn a salary and or, or income. Um, spend money in improving yourself um, in the further education, improving your job skills for promotion. And on the side, a lot of guys, especially right now with this whole lockdown, a lot of people, while they're in lockdown, have looked at starting a side business, a side hustle and things like that. So it's creating an extra cash flow. It's all about cash flow. Money in, money out. The more cash flow you have, the better. So that's step one, make the money. Step two is now we start saving the money, is eliminating waste. This is where you want to start putting, as I say, uh, at least 20% aside. You want to live on 80% and, and invest on the 20%. Yeah, so avoid waste. And this again, it comes back to that, that budgeting. Stick to that budget. So that's discipline. So if you can do it at a young age and teach your children to do it at a young age, it becomes a habit. Avoid credit cards, stick 10 purchasing power, live within your means. And then track your spending, where your money is going and things like that. So it's real basics. And then investing for money, most people would start out what we call passive investing. Now you'll sort out with uh, uh, on a debit order, putting money into a retirement annuity, putting money into a, a voluntary investment plan for your financial goals, uh, things like that. Um, as you get more knowledgeable on the market, now you start becoming more actively, what I call active investing. So now you start opening up a direct share, a, a trading account, and you learn about, uh, do the research, and you learn about trading directly on the share market, might be local and offshore. And as you build up more capital, now we start looking at acquiring rental property remember i said rental property not just buying a house uh, it's renting it out and get other people to to pay the bond for you and again also investing in other businesses those are ways of 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 increasing all your your investments so building a legacy so there's two processes you want to build up the assets wealth creation and wealth protection again this is where the financial advisor will come in You'll sit down and come do what they call a capital needs analysis. It looks at the risk. So it's important to have life cover, disability, and health care. Something happens to you, you want to have protection in place. And also that's step one. Number two, you want to look at your investments and you'll help you with your retirement planning and your financial goals. So then you can look at learning more about the market, investing directly in local and offshore stocks, looking at learning more about investing in rental property and things like that. So that is step one. Step two, now we start imparting this knowledge and we, we talk about generational wealth and this is where i believe family legacy planning comes in you don't do this when you're dead it's a living living document so while you're alive 
you're sorting this out. You're discussing this with your family. Okay, get rid of the stuff you don't want. You don't want to leave it behind for your children because they feel guilty trying to get rid of the stuff when you're not there. Okay, so make sure you will. You have a will. A lot of people, they say up to 80% of people do not have an up-to-date will. That's scary. Okay, the financial advisor will also help you with estate planning and also help you with designating executives or help you with this, the distribution or the wealth preservation of uh, the, what you've built up now. Um, and it, as I say, along the line, all the time, it's a living document. Um, I, I talk about a living will. You want to teach your children about personal finance, teach them about the dangers of debt. There's good debt and there's bad debt. Teach them about taxes, how to minimize your, your taxes legally. There's ways and means of doing that. Okay, so guys, I hope that is very, very short. I've still run out of time. Um, let me see just quickly what kind of questions we have. Very, very basic today. Let me see what kind of questions we have. Uh, okay, that's just when we ran out of sound. I know that I wasn't on mute. Uh, no questions. Cool. How do I start? How do I start? Um, depends. Okay, good question. How do I start? Um, as I said, the best thing to do is sit down with a financial advisor and you'll do a whole needs analysis for you. Um, alternatively, sit down and say, what is your investment objectives? What's important for you? Most people um, would say is uh, uh, they want to create a, uh, buy a house. Depends how young you are, or what age you are, buy a house, buy a car. Uh, I believe the first starting point is to look at retirement. Start the earlier you, you start, and that's where I mentioned last month's uh, webinar, uh, taking advantage of compound interest. You can start with a retirement annuity as little as 500 rand a month. And I believe one of the biggest advantages of retirement annuity is disciplined savings. It's forever savings. In other words, you cannot get all of the money until the age of 55. So yes, it's flexible. You can contribute a uh, minimum 500 rand. You can contribute more than that. Um, you can stop it, stop and start um, as, in, you know, as in when the financial situation gets better, but you're building up capital all the time. That's a starting point. That's what I suggest you guys look at, the start of the retirement annuity. Okay, what other questions are there? And then obviously you can add on other products. You know, a voluntary investment plan gives you more flexibility. You want savings in the, in the short term, um, look at a voluntary investment plan. And one other big advantage is another tax efficient vehicle. Every time it's used a tax efficient vehicle, your contributions are tax deductible, especially if you're working, uh, you're employed, or if you're working for yourself. Uh, use, the, use that tax advantage uh, contributions to your favor. Um, and then also there's another product called the tax-free investment plan. Uh, well, you don't have your tax, your uh, contributions are not tax deductible, but your proceeds one day when you want to take that money out is all tax free. So your capital growth. So that's another way, uh, a product you can use to complement your retirement annuity. Okay. Let me just see what other questions are coming out here. Uh, go over the splits again. What is proposed saving element? Um, okay, so Monet, good question. So this guy, so it's a suggestion, yeah. Uh, suggestion is that you save at least 20% into into uh, uh, saving or in investment. Uh, so 20% live on 80% and invest 20%. So um, I like to break it down a bit further. When I say saving, it's saving towards a TV or a holiday or a um, uh, a, a car. So ten percent goes into what I call long-term savings, um, and the other ten percent is what I call financial freedom account. This is forever savings, money that you, you will never that you'll never touch. Okay, so the idea, the other eighty percent is the money that you live on. You can break down a bit further and say okay, that eighty percent I want to live on. Fifty percent is my needs. Ten percent will be um, of fifty uh, percent of the eighty percent will be my needs. 10% uh, will be fun, 10% will be um, uh, education, and 10% will be uh, my, my charity. But um, yeah, look at it, go Google. They're called money jars, six money jars. Um, I've just simplified it with, with 80 and 20. Mona, I hope that answers your question. Cool. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. Cool. Let us quickly just summarize. Okay, wealth is a gift. Yeah. That opens doors opportunity. Just think back, as I mentioned myself, I never had inheritance. Um, if I had, 
opportunity where I had an education fund, going to university, things like that would have made my life much easier. Um, uh, or starting off life without having uh, a debt would be much easier. So that's the kind of thing you want to leave for your children. You don't want to be in a situation where you're, you're repeating what, what you've gone through. So there's many ways you can influence your children's lives financially beyond the simple concept of disinheritance. So teach your children about money. So leaving a legacy for your children, grandchildren, etc., or charities takes careful planning and the advice of the financial play, of, of a financial advisor. And I suggest, guys, look at financial uh, getting a financial advisor. And this is the problem with a lot of people. They think I don't need a financial advisor. Get a financial advisor. Get that ball rolling. As I say, get a, a support team around you. So just in conclusion. Um, all these links, these are different products we have, these are all tools you can use, or vehicles to help you build up your wealth and ultimately um, your inheritance and, and legacy for your children. So I say from my side, this webinar hopefully will be sent out by tomorrow. And from my side again, happy investing. I want to leave you lastly with a little quote. I saw this. This is from a, a, a author, Michael Hopf. Uh, he wrote a book called uh, Those Remain. He's also the author of a book called uh, Remains of the Day. It was a movie with Anthony Hopkins in it. But he says, hard times create strong people. Strong people create good times. Good times create weak people. And weak people create hard times. So I want you to think about it. It's all about choice. So from my side again, thank you very much for being on this webinar. There's our email. You know, all of us, that's our, the, uh, the investment specialist, the the wealth box, you can get all of us at wealth at PSG, or you can get us all of us at 0860 But thanks a lot for being on this webinar. Until next month, all the best. Bye for now.